In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the VS Visual Studio code extensions that are useful for web design or web development. So without further ado, like and subscribe and follow along. Now you can install extensions in VS Code by just going to the Extensions tab and you just simply search for these in your marketplace. So for example, the first one we're going to be looking at is this one called Auto Rename Tag. So if you just do a search for auto rename, it will search the entire repository of extensions and you just simply press the install button right here and boom, that extension is installed and you can then immediately use it. Now for a lot of the plugin preferences, you can simply click the little lock box here, not lock box, I don't know what we call that, the little uh, cog, if you will. And you can see that there is often extension settings. So if you click on configure extension settings, this typically takes you to a page where you can go ahead and edit and update any settings to configure the various plugins. Now this extension, what this extension does, the auto rename tag extension, is it automatically will rename a tag if you change either the first or last tag. So let's look here at a sample here. Now I'm gonna open up my little theme here and open up my index.html page. And for example, see here I have the unordered list tag. So if I just change this to let's say an ordered list, Notice that it will automatically update the ending tag. And same thing, if I'm down at the ending and I change this to a div, you can see right up here that automatically updates the beginning tag. That's something that I find myself doing quite frequently. And if you don't have that installed, you got to change here. Remember to come down, change here. So that's basically what this tag does in a nutshell. All right, the second extension here is what we call Beautify. So this extension will basically just reformat, it's a reformatting extension for your HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So over here you can see in my index.html file, I have sort of messed up the indenting on purpose everywhere. I'm sure we all run into this from quite often when we're working with HTML. So what you can do here is you can just run uh, your command and notice I've got this option here called beautify file. I should mention that in order to run some of the commands here for VS Code, you can do command shift P. There's also a menu item to run the command. But all I do is just go ahead and select the beautify file and notice it just automatically fixed that. So it properly indented everything, the closing and ending tags. And of course the options are customizable. So you can set up to have two space indenting, four space indenting, tab indenting, as well as how it determines when to wrap and when not to wrap via the plugin uh, preferences. All right, the third VS extension here is what I call, or what's known as bracket pair colorizer. Now there's actually two versions of this. There's an old bracket pair colorizer and this is bracket pair colorizer two. And the new version is supposed to be a little bit faster and cleaner and is more in line with VS Code's defaults. So I've got the second one enabled here. But what this does, this is really helpful whenever you're working with JavaScript specifically. Uh, so I'm gonna open up here, let's see, a page in my Explorer that's a big JSON file. So for example, this is kind of a mess, right? There's a bunch of nested JSON in this and especially this one right here. I mean, this has just got all sorts of stuff. The Webpack file is even a total mess. And it's really hard to see without this extension which brackets match with which brackets. But this extension essentially colorizes all the matching brackets. So you can see that here, this uh, yellow one matches up with this yellow one. And this pink one matches up with this pink one. And this bracket matches up with this blue bracket. And so you can really easily see whenever you have configuration files or JavaScript where you're doing lots of brackets and there's nested functions inside of functions, makes it really easy to see which of those pairs match with one another and still just having them all be gray or you know whatever your font color is. So very helpful extension there. All right, the next extension for VS Code here is called Browser Preview. Now what this essentially does is it brings in a headless version of Chrome directly into your VS Code so you can live preview things. Uh, now there's a couple of ways to launch this. You can see here, typically you'll have a browser preview button over here in your sidebar that you can launch this with. I have my sidebar heavily customized for my video tutorial, so there's, it's not, there's not a lot of junk over there. But you can also run the browser preview open preview command. So I'm just going to come over here again and let's open up this HTML file and we'll go ahead and run this. So I can search for the browser preview and you can see there's the option called open preview here. So as soon as I select this option here, it's going to launch a version over here and then it will automatically load up a live, you can see it actually pulls up a little web server and then it's gonna serve up whatever page you currently have active. So that is what browser preview does. It's very helpful to just get kind of a live preview again, directly inside of a 
VS Code extension window. This next uh, extension is called CSS Navigation. And this extension, I actually, I don't use as often because there's another extension and some of the default VS Code now does what this extension used to do for me. But one of the helpful things here is that this allows you to navigate to a CSS definition from your HTML file. So for example, if I'm over here in my HTML and I have a class, a class like app-nav, you can right click here and you can say, go to definition. And what this does is it'll open up the CSS file and then launch that definition. Now, this one is actually using my next extension, which is called CSS Peak, because this does the exact same thing. So CSS Peak, uh, these kind of conflict, like I said, but the CSS Peak, which is the one I probably recommend over the other one, is the same sort of thing. So you can go to the definition or go to the symbol in your workspace. So you just right click and say, go to definition. You can also come over here and say peak and you can peek at the definition and it will open up sort of an inline version for you. That's where it gets its name from. This is very similar brackets, Adobe's brackets, the code editor called brackets, this free and open source kind of uh, initially had this several years ago and many people have copied it. Um, but I think even Dreamweaver now has this feature. Uh, but that's how we can do with peak. You just peek on that definition and it'll just fly it open in line, which is, and then you can just, you can actually live edit this. You can change anything and just save right here. So that's kind of a helpful little feature as well. So that's what CSS peak does. Pull it in inline or go to the actual definition in the, in the CSS file. And there again, there's quite a few other resources in the CSS peak extension too. Right. The next extension is actually what I call a theme. So VS Code has many built-in themes that allow you to customize the uh, look and feel of your editor. Um, I've got several of them installed in here. You can see this one's called a Twilight. I like this Twilight theme. It's actually a theme that's ported over from, uh, I believe it came from TextMate, which is the code editor I still often use on a Mac, TextMate. Uh, I like the Twilight theme here. But anyway, you can search and install themes to customize the experience of uh, your code editor. So I actually don't know what, I think I might have Twilight installed. No, this is not, this is default, I think. But you can see if you come up here to your menu in your code editor, you can come up and after you install a theme, of course, uh, I can't remember where it's at because I rarely go there. Let's just do a little help. Um, looks like color theme, preferences, color theme. There we go, code, preferences, color theme. And you can switch between them. So here's the Twilight theme, for example, and it automatically switches to the various themes. So. That is how you can work with different themes inside of VS Code. I'm just gonna go back here to the default dark plus. All right, the next extension on the list here is what is known as the live SAS compiler extension. Now, if you work with CSS a lot, you often get to the point to where you'll sort of graduate to what's known as a CSS preprocessor, pre whether that's less or SAS or stylus or post CSS, there's all sorts of them out there. Uh, but I, I particularly use SAS. And so this is a compiler that will automatically compile your SAS files. So you can see here, I'm not going to show an example of this, but basically it allows you to just live edit your SCSS files. So you can change variable names, change any of the functions. And as soon as you save, it will automatically compile down the SAS into a CSS file. And then of course you can have your browser refresh that file to see those changes immediately. So that is what uh, the live SAS compiler does for you. There's quite a, quite a few uh, configuration settings in this as well. I should mention one more thing before I end on this. Uh, if you have the live browser reload, you can actually preview those live like I showed you with the browser preview as well. So that is helpful. All right, next extension is the live server extension. So this extension is kind of like the live preview, except it has uh, quite a bit more customization and options than the other server does. So this kind of serves the same purpose. It will launch a development server directly inside. Um, the only difference here, I guess I should mention, is that live server just uses whatever browser you want. So I have Firefox, Chrome, Safari, whatever you want. Will It will launch a web server in that browser. So it doesn't actually put it in a window embedded inside of VS Code, which the live preview one does. So in this one, it just launches your development server. Now there's actually a configuration setting in the live preview plugin where you can make it use the live server for the preview. So you can actually kind of tie those two plugins together and make it work like that. 
Uh, but this is one that I use quite often, especially when I'm working with uh, anything to do with something that's backend related or JavaScript related. I like to have it running in the in the live server. So I get a lot of questions in my videos, which are, you know, how do I make it? So when I automatically save, it automatically shows the preview. The answer is this plugin, the live server plugin will do that for you. All right, the next plugin, we're actually gonna do two here in this little segment because they kind of work hand in hand. This plugin is called the Markdown All-in-One plugin. And what this enables there, you to do is just have shortcuts for working with Markdown files. So Markdown is sort of a, uh, a way you can write HTML. It's kind of like SAS for CSS, Markdown for HTML, if you will. Uh, but anyway, this plugin has several features for working with Markdown. So often readme files are written in Markdown format. And what I really like about this is if you come into the preferences here, I'm going to show you in this one. I'll come into the, uh, let's see, we'll configure the extension settings. There's an option in here that is, I think I already have it toggled on right here. So it's called auto show preview to the side. And this is really helpful. So for example, I'm going to open up a markdown file here. So I've got a little readme. So this is a markdown file right here. And what's nice is that it shows you the preview of what that renders out in HTML over to the right. So, you know, if I just add a, another couple of these, it automatically updates that. So that goes from a header one to a header two to a header three. And so anyway, you get the automatic preview as you type. It's just live, right? It just automatically updates over there. So very, very helpful. Um, I, I struggle with remembering Markdown, so it's nice for me to have the visual aspect. So in conjunction with this, I have a plugin called Markdown Lint. And this is a linter plugin for Markdown. A linter means it reads your code and tells you if there's errors with your code. So for example, if I come over to this Markdown file here, and I let's say I put an exclamation mark right here, notice it's going to automatically highlight that, and it gives me this little warning here. It's telling me, hey, this is not valid Markdown code. So you can click on this, and it actually has an automatic fixer. So I can just say, fix it, and boom, it'll automatically fix that so that it is valid Markdown. And so very helpful for when you're just, you know, cruising through writing Markdown, it'll highlight if you have an error. So that plugin with the other one is really nice when you're working with Markdown. I've got a couple other plugins here that are for working with PHP, but of course, if you're programming, you're going to install some plugins that are dependent on your specific programming language. The last one I'm going to cover in this tutorial is what I call, or I keep saying what I call, what they call, what the author called VS Code Icons. So this is a Visual Studio extension that automatically adds icons to your sidebar. So if we come over here and look at my Explorer, you'll notice that in my sidebar, each of my files has a different icon. So notice that one has a key because it's a license file. This one has some brackets because it's a JSON file, info for readme. This is a Webpack file, HTML, uh, CSS. So all of the various files and folders get their own uh, icons instead of just default, you know, arrows. So that's kind of a really neat, neat little one. You can see here all the different ways you can set this up and configure it as well when you have all these icons enabled. But that's kind of a helpful icon, so you can quickly just glance over there and see the different uh, icons. So that is the VS Code icons. So anyway, that's kind of the top extensions that I use in Visual Studio Code. Comment down below if you have any extra extensions that you use or some of your favorite things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, thumbs up, share, all that good stuff. And we will see you in the next one.